getting all the getting all the pre pre show jitters out, you know. So I get jitters? nervous. Yeah, I get I get I get nervous. Get excited. It's excitement. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. I'm talking about research. I can't be nervous. I just I just blabber it's like, oh, well, actually, actually it's funny. I, I know we've just started recording, but I, I did a video and I thought, oh, yeah, I'm just going to talk about paper. It's a really short paper. It's eight pages. Oh, I'd be fine. I'd be like, I don't know, a minute a page. <laughs> talking. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> 19 minutes and 38 seconds i had the video up uh, yeah i know i know yep well I, I said to myself well it's a 10 page pdf the first page is the title page the last page is the reference page it's only eight pages long and i've only got like six or seven main highlights like red highlights i was like oh yeah i should be fine like a minute per highlight yeah, no no i bring up another paper as well and i had no i had not planned for that <laughs> oopsie <laughs> yeah that that's what happens when you get a researcher talking about research um yeah. I, I might i might have to bring in some of like my myself rants in there as well bring it make it a bit more personal because there are some things that about that paper that really got me but i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna be professional about this you professional why because i'm a pp <laughs> <laughs> perfect diamond as well you're a pp pre <laughs> pp pre Professional podcaster, professional researcher. I mean, yeah, I'm a PR. <laughs> I am a PR stunt. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm not going. I'm not touching that one. <laughs> I am not touching that one. <laughs> so, what yeah. are we talking about today? Um, I don't know because I don't know. Ah, oh, cool. So, would it. you call that? Would you call that? Meta ignorance. Yeah, that was clever. I like that. I made that on the spot as well. <laughs> it's always as if I'm funny. Um, yes, meta ignorance, unknown Almost. unknowns. <laughs> yep. yep. Um, imagine me talking no. about research paper with this sense of humor. No one would pay attention to the paper. I, no one pays attention to the paper anyway, so it's fine. Um, I do, but I'm probably one of the only ones. <laughs> How the mighty! I, I love the pain in your reaction. You're like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, serious, serious conversation-ish. Because I mean, we're 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 never really fully serious over here. Uh, mm. Over here in on the in the in the UK, where it's kind of like a microwave. It's silly right now. It's meant to be forty degrees tomorrow. Or is it tomorrow or the day after? Yeah, Monday. What's the day today? Saturday. Yeah, it's on Monday. Oh, yeah. I'm meant to be playing football on Tuesday, so <laughs> yeah. I'm a goalkeeper though, so I'll just be standing still. <laughs> but isn't that work? Uh, no, because you can wear a hat. Mm. So I, I can literally just stand in my goal, shout at the players like, go do that running thing. Um, yeah. The reason well, I'm a goalkeeper is because I'm blind. Yeah, I'm I'm blind. So when I'm out on pitch, I just mess up all the time. I kick people instead of the ball. I miss the ball. I fall over my own feet, that sort of stuff. So I stand in goal instead and try and catch a ball coming at me really, really quickly. And that's why he's a researcher. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so meta ignorance, unknown unknowns. The the reason I brought this up as a as a as a topic to talk about, as a topic to talk about. There we go. Uh, is one. I'm researching it anyway. Um, <laughs> so it sort of came up as a topic, but also because of the idea that people know things uh, mm -hmm. inside of course creation and content creation and sharing their ideas online, et cetera, et cetera. We are all meta ignorant and we can't get away from it. It's impossible to get away from. So don't try. <laughs> um, but I think people try. Maybe. I think people... So th this is something called metastable achievement. Um, uh, no, metacognitive achievement. Sorry, get my words right. Where it's it's a, a metacognitive task. I, you're thinking about your own ability to do something and you're misjudging your performance, which is where the Dunning-Kruger effect and the false consensus effect come from. But when we are judging our own performance, which is what was mentioned in the sports coaching study, which I found really interesting with the feedback. John, you may, may know what I'm talking about here. But people 
pick they select their own feedback so they might select feedback from the viewers or a close group of friends or people that are supporting them and that feedback is inflating their own views of their competence uh, which yeah. i think happens inside of content creation quite a lot because you can get massive creators like one million two million subscribers talking about a topic and i don't know whether it's true obviously because i'm on the outside but they may think they know about a topic because well, they're a big channel, they've got loads of views, loads of people are agreeing with it in their comment section, but that feedback isn't actual, true or real, which isn't useful. And that's where I think gurus start to appear in social media yeah. and online, which mm -hmm. is the, the main issue, I think, when it comes to meta ignorance is if you don't have someone that is in the know, I don't want to say smarter because I don't like saying, oh, they're smarter yeah. than them it's just they have more evidence behind what it is that they're saying and if you don't yeah. have those people are the researchers normally or the professors or the whatever challenging what's going on in the, the public and the public face then the people with the dunning-kruger effect that are sort of down the bottom of that curve a little bit that don't have full actual knowledge they're pushing or maybe even creating courses around something that they don't really understand of course how do you check that? Yeah, that's that's a whole other conversation, but gurus are all over the internet. How do you get rid of the gurus? How do you find the gurus? That sort of thing. Is getting rid of gurus actually a solution as no. well? I don't think it's possible. No, I don't think it's possible. It would be nice, especially in the business world, because there are plenty of gurus who just sit there spouting the same old nonsense and it's not actually help there's, there's this big shift in the business in business at the moment and just in general of like what used to work does doesn't work anymore things that used to work and basically it's all the tips tricks and hacks we've been using for years that have worked for years and no longer working they're just they're just we're in it we are we are changing cycles we are changing complete different cycles and we're shifting in a direction that no one fully knows what's happening there is so much <laughs> there are so many unknown unknowns there are so many right now um which is quite hard to navigate and kind of one thing something that i was talking about was around trusting and like having that trust in yourself and trust in your systems and that the fact that they're the same thing and that has stemmed very much from this moment where the environment that we're in there is so we are so meta ignorant about the space we're coming into. We don't know. We just don't know now what's happening in business. And so from my perspective, it is the only thing that is <clears throat> consistent in your environment is the person in is you. So from my perspective, the only thing we can do right now to weather this weird time, it's like even in the creator space, Twitter's algorithm has changed again. Twitter's algorithm has changed again. Yeah. Whatever. I'm not going to touch that one because that's a hot done. There are no, but <laughs> things have changed and reach is down even for big creators. And I think people are getting tired of the same things being said because that's what's happening. People are saying the same things over and over again. And it's just the, yeah, there is Absolutely. no, it's, 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 I think. I think the fact that we can sort of meme say, oh, is that a Pinterest quote, just just supports the fact that there are there are quotes that you will see, most of them aren't actually quotes, um, that you'll see on Pinterest or Instagram or even just quoted on Twitter for whatever reason. And you're like, you're saying the same thing over and over and over again. Everyone knows the quote, but they don't actually understand what the quote means, why the quote's there, how to apply the quote, how to get any sort of lessons from the quote. And you're just like, oh, I don't see the point of this, um, which is where evidence, whether that is research, whether that is your own experience, anecdotal evidence, like there needs to be something there, which is where, in, from my experience, educators help to get you through meta ignorance. But as as a species, as a human species, there are loads of areas that we just don't know. We don't know, which is where the frontier of research is. Obviously, with the the, the telescope, what is it? Uh, it's a Webb, James Webb's telescope. Like, obviously, doing the whole taking pictures of the space and stuff. And you're like, oh, new new learning. 
oh dot yeah. that's red cool uh, i'm not an astrologist so i, I yeah I'm, no, not, I'm not that interested no, in it, but... it, yeah <laughs> yeah i can have that one <laughs> there's a dot red dot telescope thing look that i am ignorant but I'm not meta ignorant because I know I'm ignorant of all of the stuff. Well, I, I am meta ignorant, but you you get what I'm saying. I know I'm ignorant around that area. And this is what experts do. They go, oh, I don't care about that. So I'm not going to learn about it. Uh, yeah. And they focus on what they actually care about. Um, I can't remember who said it. Uh, I think Thiago tweeted about it. Um, but I know it from my undergraduate, which is essentially experts know when not to learn. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, and you're like, yeah, pretty much, which is why people with a PhD, they don't know just the PhD, but their research focus is very narrow. I, I want to, there's a misconception that PhD people only know what they research. I'm like, no, because I don't know what your perception of PhD is. So I'm going to be careful how I say this, but when people think about a PhD, say they research sports coaching, they only know sports coaching. Well, obviously your experience with my conversation is that sports coaching involves loads of other fields. But yeah. to prove, prove a line in a PhD, you have to have done a, a variety of lateral reading in who knows what topic. So you'll actually know loads of stuff that has nothing to do with your research because you need to know that it's not <laughs> related to your research, if that makes sense. Yeah, can you explain lateral reading? reading different articles pages papers sources yeah. on the same topic so, yeah <clears throat> good call yeah yeah that and i think that comes into it's just so fascinating where we're at like in the business world i'm going back there because it is it's really fascinating to me that we're at this point now where every single trick is gone is gone everything we thought we could do is gone. Like every manipulation tactic, so to speak, whatever, like all the tactics are just not working and they've stopped working. And I find that interesting because we're in this almost, to use a concept from Gestalt, we're in this fertile void where something else is going to come to grow and something else. We are in this period of like something is coming. We don't know what that is. Things are changing. We have like, pure meta ignorance here and it's really interesting to see what comes next and this is why for me I've kind of gone from like very this to spreading out myself of like what else is there let's look at what what exists let's see what's happening and I find that yeah it's it's super interesting just from a point of like seeing what's coming yeah, I mean, for, from my perspective, when I look at things, when I look at things that happen inside of business, inside of those sort of areas, and I see the tricks stop working, it's because obviously the, the human race has evolved. <laughs> uh, but even though it's evolved in some senses, it's still really young. And this is, again, part of learning science. But as you start to understand things, you recognize what you're seeing. Like when we watch a video, for those that have like created content you can see the cuts you can see where they've added music taking yeah. music away and put the sound effects in and for creators because there are now more creators we when we watch content whether that's a movie a video a series on netflix or something on youtube we see what we didn't see before thinking mm. about um ecological dynamics the the online information, we now have a better focus, more attention to the information available to us because we've attuned our skills in that area. And because there are more content creators, the information now available when we consume content, we're, we're paying more attention to it. So, oh, why, why have you done that? And you see it with like graphic designers moaning about the shadow of like one letter being wrong of the other letter. And you're like, oh, who cares? They obviously do because that's what they're paying attention to. But because the world of people, the skills of people are changing. We are now noticing different things and we're paying less attention to the things that previously we could manipulate. And a lot of people, because the tips and tricks are out there, they know about it. So they know to look for it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And, but also there is a, there is almost a, a lag. People aren't realizing things have shifted and changed. And they're like, what's the matter? There, there's so much fear 
right now. There is a lot of like, I don't know what to do. Nothing is working. What can I do? Is there anything that can happen? Et cetera, et cetera. There's so much like, my business is going to fail. Everything's going to crash and burn. I can't do what I need to do, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, hmm, interesting. The reliance on on the tricks and what used to work. For me, I've always lived at a point of like, okay, this is only going to work for a very, 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 very short period of time. And then it's not. <laughs> and just be, and and so for me, what I've always thought about is like that, that act, from the beginning, it's like sustainability. Like, I want to keep going. I'm not interested in stopping. But I know that if I want to keep going, and if I want to keep moving and shifting, I need to be right on the edge, which is kind of what my, my want was as I was exploring more about ED, because I'm like, yeah, no, this is right on the edge. This is right on the edge of the edge. <laughs> Business yeah. is going to be here in like probably five years, I would say, if that. Oh, good luck with that. Well, I'm planning to potentially try. Well, the thing is, I see it. I do see it in business, but people don't recognize it. Well, they are meta ignorant of it very much. Oh, or would it just be ignorant? I would imagine they are meta ignorant of the terms. Or you could yeah. say they're hypocognitive of the terms and they yeah. have meta ignorance around the area but yeah. they are probably ignorant of some of the concepts in there. So uh, there's another term called read around, or it's a technique called read around knowledge, which mm -hmm. is where people use general knowledge that they have to try and guess at what they think it is. So when you say ecological dynamics, people may have read around knowledge about what ecology is, may know yeah. what dynamics means to them, and they might guess, but that could mm -hmm. be completely wrong. <laughs> um, <clears throat> And I mean, loads of studies and meta ignorance has shown that we we even create opinions on things that don't exist because we think they do exist. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Super cool. Well, yeah. Did you not know that? That no, I knew of it, but did not know it. Yeah. So, exactly. So the I guess uh, this is obviously going to be my one of my videos. Um, but there was a study where basically they had they gave I think it was twelve words to a group of people and said, are you familiar with these words? Um, and if you are, can you explain them? So some people said, yeah, I'm familiar with six, eight, 12, four, whatever. Um, but I think it was like 40% of people said they were familiar with three words that didn't exist. And they explained what those words meant. I think but I've they don't seen exist. that somewhere. But the words I think don't I exist. Have... Yeah. I. There's something in the back of my mind that's going, oh, yeah, you remember that. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, that is fascinating. I love it. And you and you see, they're thinking, so humans can create an idea that they know about something that doesn't exist and then justify what they've just created with read around knowledge, information they have from all over the place that has nothing to do with it because the thing doesn't exist. And if we can do that, I'm sure we can make up stuff that we think we know about and obviously that is just our own ignorance and being self-aware enough to say you know what i actually don't know like i could guess i could use read around knowledge but i don't know i really don't know um and that for me is the skill of someone doing a phd the skill of a scientist the skill of a researcher because they ask those questions they go i don't know what the word means and i'm not going to just google define it I'm actually going to find yeah. out what the word means. <laughs> How yeah. do I use it? When do I use it? When is it appropriate? When is it not appropriate? Uh, and those skills aren't seen by the majority of people because they're not in academics. They don't do research. So they don't recognize it as a skill. So they don't see, getting to one of our points, they don't see why experts are experts. Oh, the guru knows this. The expert knows this. What's the difference? The experts don't research. I don't get it. What does that mean? Well, they understand the, the reasons behind it. They're not using read around knowledge, they, they actually understand it. They can grasp it. They can explain the different nuances around the topic, uh, which I can do in some things, but I've really struggled with other things. 
if I'm in technique, you could ex- like <laughs> dump, dump that rubbish term in there. But the Feynman technique fundamentally is a load of rubbish. But the idea of explaining something not in simple terms, explaining something in terms that the receiver can understand, can grasp, that makes more sense. Um, <laughs> and that's useful. And if you can't do that, then you then you don't know. Then you are like you're not necessarily giving into or being exposed i guess you could say you're being exposed but you're recognizing your own incompetence and yeah i know that word sounds harsh but it's just what it is um yeah yeah i i was having a conversation with a client recently around like I don't feel I've got to this thing. So they were talking about something that they're learning and that they want to present and bring to clients. Something that they're really passionate about and they love. And they have this process in their head that they've come to, that they, they're they creating, so to speak. And they're like, I've not got to this stage yet. And someone uh, someone else said to him, said to, said to this person, and was like, yeah, well, you can, you know, just, you don't have to know it. You, you have it inside you. And I'm like, hmm, you're not aware of it. You may have an, an experience of it, but you're not fully like, you have it, but you don't. I'm going to ask you a question because I'm going to see what your, where, your, where your mind goes. From an ED perspective, how would you explain that? From an ED perspective, I would explain it as they don't have enough pieces in the environment. They don't have enough like understanding of the piece of what's there to actually. It's off. What would it be? Offline. Yes, I'm going to go with offline. It's kind of offline information that they're trying to bring online because they haven't got the environment around them. How do they do? Teach. <laughs> I mean, it's not wrong. I would change the way that the sentences were formed. Uh, I was thinking more about knowledge of and knowledge about. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Let's explain. Can yeah, you give so, me another explanation of the concepts just to... Yeah, so knowledge of is your ability to explain from the outside what a skill is. So Mm -hmm. typically that's through words, images, um, or actual like verbal words. I was thinking written words to start with. And that's knowledge of. So you know of the skill, you know what it should look like, how it should function. But knowledge in or about is when you're actually doing the thing. So it's kind of like theory and practice. It's not the same. It's not the same, but you could use those uh, analogies. So inside of skill acquisition, I can do the skill. So I have online information using direct, direct information, direct perception. So I have the ability to do the skill, but I can't explain how to do the skill. So you can be good at a skill because of knowledge about, but you can't explain the skill because knowledge of. And the other side, you can have knowledge of, so you know how to do the skill, but you can't do the skill. Knowledge about, knowledge of, different things. Uh, And in your scenario, I think some people know how to do the thing because they've done it, but they don't know how to explain the thing because they don't know why it works, how it works or anything like that. And that's the difference between, in sports anyway, that's the difference between a player and a coach. And when a player goes into a coach, most of the time they don't know how they did the thing that they did. So they can't help other people do it, which is, yeah. I think that was, that's shifting to me because, you know, it's all about me. Um, Of course. That is exactly what's happened to me recently. I have noticed a shift in the way I talk about what I do because I'm now understand. I have always had the knowledge, from my understanding, I have the knowledge about, like, I live it. But now, due to our conversations and my own research and, like, actually diving into ED a little bit, I'm now realising what I already the about stuff i'm starting to learn the knowledge of and like why it's working and that's making creating content for me way fucking easier and also a whole load of personal stuff of like no longer just trying to do and trying to make people happy and it's just like you know what this is what is this is what i have um and so having starting to, i'm I'm, sl- I'm seeing my own transition 
because one when with knowledge of it is far easier to be like really to trust what you have because you really can see like if someone's like no that's not true ha 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 truth one thing and it's like look here is a bunch of stuff that i have learned here is some research here is some evidence to back up what i have which is really valuable for people who actually want to learn most people just go ah, cool evidence whatever i won't read it anyway but it is like i've noticed that personal shift for me of like going from knowledge about to knowledge of and there's more obviously meta ignorance yay fun but like it's it's an experience that i've i've, I've experienced I love how I'm, I've moved you over to the dark side of like academics. <laughs> oh, you totally have. I mean, I mean, I was, I was, all, I was like this. I was like this close. I, like, I saw that and I'm like, oh, hello. I want evidence. <laughs> Give me evidence. They just come this way, join the dark side. We have, <laughs> we have Zotero. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's, because I'm, I'm just like thinking about previous conversations we'd had before you started adopting a more academic style and research. And you, you didn't disagree or dislike the evidence and research I had, but it seemed to me for like a very, I was talking about research now, or it's sort of like a shut off mind of like, I don't quite get it. I don't see the point. So that's, that's the, the perception I got from when I started speaking about research. Like, oh, I don't get it. I don't see why. Um, and now you're like, I have evidence to back up what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was. Just checking. Yeah, I don't think it was the fact that it's just like a shutdown. It was so much to take in at once. And like, it was something that I wanted to do. It was what I wanted, but I couldn't see myself going out going after it it is only in the last couple of months weeks that i'm like you know what i can i can make time for this and now that i have a system that fits me pretty well and i can now not have to think so much about all of the steps and i'm just coming in unless it's really helpful like your system that you created is really helpful of like how you go through it and how you've made it just literally as stupidly simple as possible like to a point of like it is <laughs> it's almost um I can't think of the word I was looking for it, it it's inexcusable to not do because I'm like it is that simple it's like this is stupid this this is taking me an hour to get like four to five different papers that I can then look through and because I already have some of the things from Alyssa I already I, I've skipped so much of the process that I had before of like having to figure out whether it was a paper that was okay quote unquote like yeah. it it's made life much easier through the tools like Alyssa and then Zotero and then being able to highlight in Zotero and not have to even think about it and just like highlight that it's straight in my obsidian it's making the whole process stupid fucking simple in a way that and by stupid fucking simple i don't mean minimal because everyone thinks simplicity and minimalism are the same they are not stop it you can't call my zotero minimal <laughs> no it is definitely not minimal but it's simple in a way of like it fits how my brain works and i've adapted your process to fit me because that's what you should always do instead of just copying what other people do because then you don't trust it. But I've I've tweaked my system to fit me and the way that I work so that I can trust my system. And now it's just like, if I want to research something, if you say something in a conversation and I'm like, oh yeah, please, please, a bit of that, go, I'm off. And that, that, is the, that is the change of like, I didn't, before I didn't think I could do it. So I was like, I, I'm just going to have to, if I, if I don't disengage, I'm going to basically spend all of my time researching. You are an internet academic. <laughs> and now I'm like, I can spend, like, I do not spend all my, I do not spend the amount of time you do. That's just the environment that I'm in mm -hmm. and the constraints that I have. But when I'm ready, 
I can go. So the weekends for me is very much where I start having a lot of fun just reading papers and going, oh, 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 that's why that happens. Cool. That's going to go into my Zotero. Yay. More videos to watch. Um, that's where I can have my time. Those are the constraints that I have, which and because of the systems, I can do way more than I would have been able to do. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, I'm I, going to do a quick self plug, but the, the course that John went yeah, through. Yeah, I was going to add it in the description anyway, because it was, it is a fantastic course. Well, yeah, I was, I was going to say like the, if people do have questions about it, I've answered it all in there and it's very difficult to get into the nuance as a conversation like this, because as as John's just said, like there's, there's so many small bits that you don't think about. And you're like, oh yeah, you could just do that. Oh yeah, cool. Um, I think that was the, that was the thing for me. It was less about like seeing your system and more about oh look at that tiny. There was so much nuance because you've shown me what you do. I've watched your videos. I've seen like you. We've done hour long sessions in the back end. You showing me things that you're doing and what you're working on. And I'm like, cool, yeah, that that's really cool. I wonder how to implement that. And then I go away, try to do it, and I'm like, this is not working. It doesn't make sense. But it's that context that you put into that program like that course that has made it as good as it is you have the full context in one place which in is making it so, like <laughs> and then the tiny pieces of information like i did not go through your course step by step because i didn't need to i went after what i wanted and i got it because you have it and it's all there it's delightful yeah that that, that was the plan i mean something that i struggle with I haven't done many courses. I've done a couple of free courses. I've done uh, the building a second brain one, but I know, I know how some of the courses are all, all built because I know the creators. Um, and I went, whenever I went through one of those courses, it's like you get to the end of a video or in the middle of a video or a lesson or a session or whatever. And you're like, you want to go off and, and do your own thing for like 10, 20 minutes and then come back, but you can't really do that. And obviously you pause the video and then go off, but then you're going outside of the course and you're, you're sort of diverting all over the place. And then who knows what happens after that, which is why my course is so different because it's an obsidian. It's, it's not a, a, and it is a video course, but it's not a video course. Cause you, like you say, you don't need to go step one through wherever. It's just, I want to do this thing. Okay. I'm going to do that. Oh, there's a link to that page that tells you, all the background the background work took way longer than the actual videos but the background work i think is where the, the value is it's like the small knowledge that you don't really get instead of looking through a forum or asking questions in, in discord it's just there if that makes sense yeah it's it's the it's the context surrounding your system that's where the value has been for me mm -hmm. especially yeah it's, it's really good go buy it so the, the other thing that we want to talk or that I want to talk about a little bit is the idea of a PhD like what actually is a PhD obviously we've we've explored it a little bit but a lot of people see it as just like three letters <laughs> at the end of the name oh yeah you're doctor whoever what I'm curious what do you think a PhD involves a lot of work and a lot of stress I mean and a lot and a yeah. lot of politics <laughs> a little bit a little bit yeah yeah that is that, is that about I mean, it? it it doesn't help that i follow a lot of phd people on twitter <laughs> <laughs> true true yeah so, so i hear the negative pieces um this is another example of me going okay this is a concept that i would love to do but never will have the time to do so it's a shutdown point for me of like I cannot focus my attention there. Um, I don't have strong feelings. Okay. I just yeah, know so. it's fucking hard. <laughs> it's literally what I know. And, and that that right there is why I I kind of want to like document-ish my journey of doing the PhD because I think the reason PhDs are hard for a lot of people is because there are different types of PhDs, which a lot of people don't know. You can do what's called a studentship, which is basically some professor has said, hey, I want someone to do my research for me while I work. And a student goes in and does the research. That's normally quite hard because you're spending three, four years doing someone else's research. So you're not interested in it. <laughs> it's boring. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so for me, I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that sort of PhD because I'm following someone else's research. Um, then you have a more uh, self-directed PhD where you're still doing someone else's research, but you have your own view on it. So someone else has a, an idea, a topic, a concept or whatever. Uh, and you want to ask a question that's somewhat related to their research. So you might use their research studies to, to get data for your own, or you might find a study that works for you that also works for them, but it means you're working with someone else's ideas, which again, can cause conflict and stress, uh, but it also means that you need to catch up to where they are with mm -hmm. regards to research. So your first year of your lit review is basically going, okay, I just, wh whatever situation you're in, I've just done my undergrad, my master's or wherever, I'm now going to do a PhD, but my background literature review needs to be as essentially as evidenced as this professor that's been in this field for 10, 20 years. That's stressful to catch up. And then they're asking questions about things you're like, I don't know, I haven't got there yet. Um, and you're, you're constantly in this rabbit hill, ra uh, rabbit wheel, there we go, um, of, of, of going around. I was like, it's not a hill, what is it? Um, of going around not a rabbit to... either oh hamster yeah same difference uh... <laughs> um <laughs> animal cruelty right there <laughs> danny <laughs> i really worry about you if you think a rabbit <laughs> and a hamster are the same. I, I just have mr Me mr meta ignorance <laughs> No, that, that was in mr meta stable attenuation <laughs> yeah. hamster that that's a social saying like that 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 involves me talking to people i don't do it i'm a researcher i sit in front of a thing. <laughs> yeah that we do. I, I mean that's what you gotta do though when you mess up you just keep going with it and and this is something i've actually learned when i'm talking about research is when you mess up and the person doesn't really understand what you're talking about, you can completely mess it up. But as long as you're fairly confident in what it is that you're talking about, you can carry on and they probably won't even notice, which has actually been found in research, uh, in part of the mess ignorance research, you could be talking about stuff. And as long as you sound confident and it sounds like you know what you're talking about, you could be talking out of your ass. <laughs> you might have no idea what, what's going on, but you sound confident. Anyway, back to the PhD thing. So you've got those two, you've got the basically follow the professor or do your own research that's heavily related to professor, which again is still stressful, or you do your own research, which is then funded either by a university or by yourself. Um, and that's what I'm looking to do, because that's basically you going, I have this question that I want to get answered. And I need to do some research to figure that out. And when I say research, I mean either qualitative or quantitative. So that could be, I'm going to get a hundred people in and do this test, this screening, this protocol, whatever. Or it could be qualitative. I'm going to interview 10, 20, 100,000 people and ask them these questions and see their responses. And when you think of research like that, well, everyone's doing it. Yeah. Because everyone having a conversation with a client is doing an interview. It's just, if you were to ask all of your clients the same questions, how would they response? How would they respond? That is your research. Your methods will then obviously dictate whether that's academically reliable, valid, et cetera, et cetera, but you are doing research. So to do a self PhD, you'd need to essentially do what you're already doing, <laughs> um, but have some valid or reliable reason as to why you're asking those questions, how you're asking those questions, are you, make, are you guiding those questions in one way? This is just qualitative research, of course. Um, but once you've done that research, to get the PhD, all you need to do is publish it, which, I mean, I've made that sound really easy. It's not easy. It takes a lot of work, a lot of time, because you've got editors of journals that are like, oh, no, you've misspelt that, and that research isn't like good enough. And some editors are like, oh, no, you have to reference me because I'm the expert in the field, and you have to reference my paper because politics and journalism is rubbish. Um, but <laughs> but the actual publication can be done by yourself. You don't have to be part of a university, which I found out very, fairly recently. And I was like, what? I, I didn't know that. But when you think about it, duh, businesses, companies get science research public, uh, published through their company. So like mm. Nike, Nike have published research from 
Nike, like the company, the, co- the corporation Nike, is the institution that researchers are publishing from. The researchers are obviously fairly biased <laughs> um, for obvious reasons, but they can do that. And all you need to do is an inst- be an institution, corporation, or a business, which anyone can be. So you could publish, in theory, a, this theory, you could publish a paper that you've researched for yourself. And if yeah. you can do it once, you can do it more than once. Uh, and if you do it more than once on the same topic, then you have two or three papers around your level of expertise in, an, in a topic area. Well, that is what a PhD is. It is a collection of research, either a thesis or a collection of papers that shows your expertise in a question topic area that pushes human, human understanding forwards which is attainable by most people. Yeah. The difficult part is then defending it against the experts, which is the viva bit. Mm. That bit, you're like, oh, okay. That's, that's kind of like the, the, the head teacher coming down and asking you questions. It's like, okay, do you actually know what you're talking about? That sort of thing. But if you've done your, your research and you're, you're rigorous, which I would imagine a lot of people that are doing research for multiple years about a topic that they're interested in will know what's going on if they don't why have you spent your last three years doing it (laughs) you know what i mean so yeah so for me as someone that's interested in research if i have a question about something oh and you can have more than one phd by the way Uh, some people don't know this but um some professors have like 20 phds because they've done three or four research papers in a field and then got phd from it because they defended it and then they did another three or four in another field which they didn't have to do the research. They could have had a PhD student do the research, obviously, because that's how it works. So professors can essentially get four or five PhDs from other PhD students doing the PhD. They've just defended their own research. Yeah, I know. It's so political. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Um, But it means that a PhD isn't as like way out there as a lot of people think. Mm. And what I'm looking to do, which again, Highly theoretical. I have no idea if it's possible, but online online PhDs are possible. I'm kind of trying to look to do that ish is in in theory. If I publish a paper around a topic by myself through the connections that I've created with editors from a journal, then I can publish a paper. If, If I'm publishing a paper without an institution, I don't have to pay for the university. Right. So that's a university, depending on where you are, what country you are, what institution you do, that's like four grand a year, normally three, four years. So it's fairly expensive. <laughs> um, but if I don't have to pay for the university to publish paper, that's 12 grand <laughs> that I don't have to worry about. Yeah. Which is quite nice. Um, <laughs> Just, it's a little, you know, a little bit, a little bit more, you know, yeah. yeah. Because I'm doing it myself, I don't have to worry about the supervisor and their research and the group's research. I could if I mm. want to do, but I don't have to. I also don't have to worry about the supervisor's deadlines because I'm doing it and I'm publishing it. So if, the, so if I decide, hey, you know what? I'm going to pause this for a second and go do this thing instead and then come back to it two can. months later, I just can. I don't have to worry about the deadlines, which again is one of the biggest stresses in PhD. I have to get this for editorial by this time. Mm why (laughs) if i'm doing it myself why um there are some limitations which i still need to cover like ethical considerations of research which typically you do through a research institution but ethical considerations how do institutions do it do they have their own ethical board if or can i just go to a university ethical board and say is this an ethical research paper again could i do this with connections or could I just, instead of paying four grand a year for I don't know what, uh, and spend, I don't know, 100 or 200 pounds for the ethical board to say, yes, this paper is ethical. 100, 200 pounds for an ethical board to say, yes, you're good to go is way cheaper than four grand. <laughs> yeah. And if I can do that when I want, so say, I, say I, I'm really engrossed on papers for seven months and I get two done really, really quickly. Well, now my PhD, instead of it being spread out of three years, well, now I've actually done it in one. Why not? <laughs> and it, it just brings down all of the barriers from what a PhD really is. It opens up the PhD possibility to more people. And I think, like I've, <laughs> like I've kind of done with you, 
I've I've given people that didn't think they were academic the opportunity to be academic. Yeah. Yeah, that that tracks with my story. That's literally it. It it was <clears throat> I think I said right from the beginning, it's like I didn't think I could do this because I don't have I'm not part of an institution. Like I don't even have an undergraduate and I have no intro. I think I would hate it. From my from what I've heard, I would probably absolutely hate it and fail miserably and leave. Most people do. So why 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 do I <laughs> why do I want to spend, you know, 14 grand or something over the three years? And that's a short PhD, by the way. Three to four years is a is an av- I, I say average, it's not average, it's a short PhD. Most PhDs are around five years. Some PhDs are like seven, eight. I've I've heard of some people doing PhDs over 10 year long spouts because it's just so stressful, so time consuming to do the PhD. And that's the actual PhD. So for me, I would have to go first get into an institution under on an undergraduate, which I wouldn't be able to get straight away because I have no university shit at all. So there's also qualifications. Qualifications. Yeah. Um, that's, That's another one of the benefits of doing it yourself. It's like you, you don't need a master's degree in the thing that you're doing and not being funny. Some of the, some of the master's degrees I've seen that are required for a PhD, I'm like, that has no relevance. And some of the PhDs that I'm looking to do don't let me do it because I don't have the right masters. And I'm like, shut up. Sorry. Strength and conditioning isn't in social science because it's technically sports science. Um, but I have to be able to coach, which my undergraduate degree does. Like, so what? so there are are some programs from london universities the phd programs i'm like oh that's interesting what do you need and they're like social studies or psychology and i'm like strength and conditioning coach like i I still need psychology but because i don't have a master's in psychology i can't do the phd i'm like shut up (laughs) i'm gonna do it myself (laughs) you're not a boss of me i do it myself exactly uh so i mean i'm st- i've still got a supervisor and i've still got um someone that has expertise in the coaching profession because that's the the field i'm going in so you still want advisors and stuff but that can just be your network like if you're in a network of people that know the thing which hopefully if you're a researcher and you want to evidence stuff you you're not just spouting stuff to people that don't know you're actually talking to people that do know then you have a network of people that might be inside of the editor board i mean i i follow and communicate with people on twitter that are the editor boards of multiple journals i read through so maybe i have an in i mean obviously i'm doing youtube so potentially they could find interest in some of the research videos yeah, i doing. think that's also one thing i wanted to ask like let's say i wanted to do that one i've not been to a university at all so i don't have any university connections whatsoever so there's that and then there is like, I am not, quote, and I hate the phrase, but YouTube famous, so to speak. I don't have a large YouTube following. My following is on purposely small. Uh, because frankly, I find notifications incredibly anxiety inducing and I know I will never want a big following. Um, like that to me is not what I'm after. I would rather make deep connections with a small group of people. And so, like, for in in my environment, can I do that? Could I do that? I don't think I will, but is it possible? That's the question. That's what I'm super intrigued. For you, you have a good, you have a solid following of a good amount of people that gives you that stature, so to speak. Um, and you have done university qualifications so you have connections there as well what about people who aren't in your environment that you're in with the affordances that you have i'm so glad you asked this question because the the reason i want to do this is so more well the reason i want to do this is obviously for me but also it's completely new territory (laughs) like completely new territory no one's done it to my knowledge um and online phds are pushing the boundaries a little bit so what i want to do is find out how we can do it moving forwards because i want i i don't like people paying for articles i don't like education being behind paywalls which is what phds are they're part of education behind paywalls so i'm trying to get rid of that so how do we get rid of that well firstly we need 
a network. We need connections. We need people that are in the industry to be forward thinking enough to accept other people into it, basically, um, which is going to be a challenge. But once you've found those couple of people, which hopefully I will end up doing in my field anyway, um, during my PhD, then you can start sort of coordinating other people in there. So I guess the, the end goal in like four or five years would to have a, a proof of concept of someone being able to use connections and conversations with people that do know in the field and then do it themselves. Um, Because at the moment, the biggest limitations are obviously some of the logistical things that the publishing field have deliberately put in because they're a business and they want loads of money because they're greedy. Um, And when I say they're greedy, I mean like they are really greedy. Academic, like, oh my God, the amount of money is just insane. Anyway, I'm not going to go on that one. Um, But the other barriers are just connections. It's literally that. It's just knowing the right people. Um, So... If someone, whoever that is, might be me, might be someone else, I don't know, makes connections in the journals or does the the first bit, then other people can follow. It's it's kind of like I'm I'm waiting, I've been searching (laughs) for a while for someone to do their own PhD um, and like follow their footsteps, but I can't find anyone yet. I haven't found anyone in any field so far. I found someone that was close, um, but they did it in line with Google. <laughs> like they were they were an AI developer and they did their PhD, but they published articles themselves. They self-published their articles, which I was like, cool, first step done. But to do the PhD, he basically joined the institution of Google to like get the PhD and then used his papers to get into a PhD program. So I was like, that's not quite the same. Um, so couldn't you, for all intents and purposes, just have a business that publishes the paper? Like, for example, like, why, why could you not just have your own company that publishes? I'm trying Ooh. to think of the reason why not. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I, uh, I'm just like, I, I'm going to publish a PhD paper from, from Simplicity Specialist as the institution. First conflict of interest, ethical, meh. Well, yeah, but as an institution, like an institution is just a university or a, or a place or a thing. So Brighton University, for example, which is the university I go to, publish articles all over the place, like geography, biology, chemistry, sports, journalism, all over the place, because it's just the student. The student goes to the journal to publish the paper and the student is just associated with an institution. But the journal normally want to see that you're part of an institution for perceived credibility and to show that you have ethical considerations etc etc um that's the implicit communication between a journal and institution i guess if you're i guess if i was a business if i was a business or you were a business or an institution that people published from yeah there, there would be no 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 real limitation I can think of. Obviously, there's probably policies, procedures, and stuff that I'm that I just don't know about. I'm meta ignorant about. Um, but yeah, that that's that's the sort of conversation I'm like, ah, oh, that's a good point. I mean, obviously, my I, I like the term internet academic, and that's what I want to try and do. I want to try and get more people online to be academic, just in the way that they do research, rather than spouting rubbish. <laughs> um, but yeah. If, that's a good question and i don't have a good answer for it yummy yeah that's that's i i I mean that that's my um metacognitive achievement right there is i i don't know i just don't know um is it possible in theory i think so um and then could the institution be networked with journals or editors of the journals Yes. So in theory, the, insti- the institution would be a network of journal editors, which could be any field. It doesn't matter. So what, you could what, create a business called Internet Academics, which becomes an institution. Yeah. And it would just be academic connections in fields. And I wouldn't have to worry about all the stuff because they do their own network and connections. <laughs> I mean, like, that's same, actually quite a... It's a forward-thinking community. That's basically what it is. It's a forward-thinking academic community. 
because you're going to get basically all the academics in there because that's what academics do um and that's one of the biggest issues in like human knowledge is academics are hidden away in their own groups wherever labs blah 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 and then you got the public going um i gotta pay for this article that i don't understand how to read and even when i do understand how to read it i still don't grasp what's going on in the concept because i haven't had like 20 years to research this thing um research gap <clears throat> and closing that gap is difficult but if people could just be in that community i mean oh imagine that imagine a parent, for example, wanting to know about a disease, instead of going to Google and trying to find Google articles, they could go to research papers and recognize the publishers because the publishers would be in a self community, whatever you want to call it. Because I like you could be a publisher of an article about something. And if a business owner or a parent or whoever wants to know about the thing, you've been in the thing for however long. You've got experience. You actually have papers around it because most academics don't do the practice. No. Whereas, whereas you are doing the practice. And you could be an academic doing the practice. And this is this is where, um, what my uh, head of course, my head of undergraduate course was taught. He spoke quite a lot about this in coaching. Um, there are loads of practitioners that are doing academically evidence-based practice, but they don't have the skills, knowledge, or connections to put to publish their research, their practice. So the communication is just in like courses when you like see the coach and like, oh yeah, how'd you do this? Well, I do this because I found this research paper on this, that, and the other. So the conversations that happen in academics happen inside like the high coaching circles because the connections are there. But the conversations could be in academia if academia was easier. <laughs> and if all the conversations are in one place, it makes knowledge development moving forwards easier as well, I think. Yeah. And I mean, take that out of sports and put business in there instead. I would imagine the, the big business owners have loads of experience that they're probably putting in courses and stuff. But, but they don't the have the like this is this is something that I'm grabbing right now of like shit everything i'm doing is evidence-based and if it's not it's a small tweak like i finally got to a point where some one of the big things i've always wanted to do in as a marketing perspective is have some form of framework some form of explanation of how i do what i do but the issue with the framework is that there's no there's no rigor and like actual science behind it so for me i was just like well this is just a set of things that i do it's not like there's no evidence that it works and now from what i'm doing and, and leaning into the research side of what i'm doing my framework's basically appearing because it already exists it's mm -hmm. just me translating perception and action moving it into a business state kind of ecological dynamics in general to be fair but specifically that perception and action and the relationship and the coupling and extending that and moving that into business and then focusing down on system design business design and like it is all academically backed most people won't care <laughs> obviously yeah. but actually there is evidence for what i'm doing which i do care about and and there is also that yes you know you know business people write blog posts yeah blog posts and articles are essentially the same thing except an article has peer review has references and uh you, it it needs to be not bad <laughs> <laughs> Whereas a blog post it doesn't have much like if, if if you're an academic you will pick an academic article over a blog post because of what an academic article has to go through but essentially they're the same thing yeah if you asked a business owner to write an academic paper they would go nope because either they don't know how but they actually do know how or they don't have the evidence and if they don't have the evidence why are they writing the blog post Ooh spicy i mean I, I'm, um, I'm just putting it out, putting I don't it out like there. that question that is a good question if they don't have the i evidence, think it's i think also it's your definition of evidence mm -hmm. 
but it doesn't like this is what i was saying like right at the start evidence can be anecdotal evidence and if it is mm. anecdotal then say my anecdotal evidence is X, Y, Z. And there are academic articles that use anecdotal evidence. They are normally frowned upon because people in the academics are very like elitist. Oh no, it needs to be a, a, a meta-analysis, a systematic review of 3000. Yeah. Oh, sh shut up. Um, but there are academic <laughs> papers. <laughs> there are academic papers out there. I mean, one of the papers that I read recently, I'm not even joking. It was one page and it was a review of a taxonomy. It was like, I think it was Bloom's Taxonomy Revisited. And it was a one page article. It had four references and it had like a three lined abstract and a couple of sections. That was an academic article. Is that rigorous enough to do to get a PhD from? No, um, but it's an academic article. It went through peer review. It had references in, not many, but enough. And what was being said was evidence based. Could that have been a blog post? Yes. Change the formatting on it so it's not like three columns and it looks disgusting. And you get a blog post that's evidence based. <laughs> like, sorry, I enjoyed that way too much. <laughs> Just like, it's just not disgusting. I, I really hate how they do three columns. It is infuriating. Yeah. It's just, two you, columns, two, fine. I'll, I'll have two, but three, why? Why? Who decided that, that is a good way of reading? Oh. Dyslexics? Any? I'm, I'm, so I'm not dyslexic, but I still, I get to the end of the line and I'm like, wait, is that another line or is that the other section? Yeah. No, this doesn't make sense. What's going on? <laughs> oh, and trying to highlight that. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I give up highlighting across <laughs> multiple pieces now. I was like, right, fine. I don't need that quote. The quote is not that important. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm done. I'm like, come on, come on. Come on! <laughs> a tool that I've started using is Zotero when that mm -hmm. happens, because there are some PDFs that don't allow you to highlight because of how you may have attained the PDFs, I hope, um, is you can use the uh, area tool, the square area tool. So obviously Clever. it's for pictures, but you could just do it around the words. Yeah. Clever. I like. I like. And obviously you can OCR that, but I don't bother. I just type it out because I'm lazy. Um. Right. There was a lot of products for that one. <laughs> okay. OCR I is just meant type to make it things... out because I'm lazy. Wait. No, you're doing more work. But OCR, there are so many, not bugs, but things that can go wrong that you have to fix later. Yeah. I'm like, okay. nah. you have to set it up. You have to make sure it works. You have to have all the installs right. And if the install does break or an update happens, then you have to change it no. all over and over. And it's just a no. blah, 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 blah. But yeah, so that... That was a very short conversation about um, a PhD, you know? Oh yeah, tiny. <laughs> and if you have any thoughts or feedback or ideas or maybe interest into uh, whether, whether, well, research in general, just where I'm going, obviously reach out to either of us. But yes, yeah, it's an interesting thought, interesting idea. I have no idea how I'm going to do it or what I'm going to do is literally like, I am learning as I do the thing. Yeah. So... It, Maybe I'll do a, a video journal-ish thing about it on the channel. Have like a every month do a, hey, this is what's happening with the PhD sort of thing. Um, I don't know. I think that'd be quite interesting. Yeah, certainly. Um, I imagine I'll grab some attention from some PhD students with the video because like they're stressed about deadlines. I don't have to worry about them. They're stressed about the money. I don't have to worry about it. Like, well, as much anyway. Money's still a thing. <laughs> it's not going away anytime soon. No, definitely not. But yeah, I mean that's a that's a nice nice brief conversation about meta ignorance and uh, PhDs. What are we titling this one? Unknown unknowns. Nice. So anyway, right. Uh, see you guys next week. Well. Oh, what was, what did it? Keep them coupled. <laughs> <laughs> mm.